Mr. President, Minister, we do not have it at the Forum as a practice to confer awards, but today we make an exception, and I have the great honor to confer the Global Statesmanship Award, also on your name, on your behalf, and actually there's only one last awardee whom I remember, it's Shimon Peres, whom we will honor with a special tribute next Friday. For this reason, it's even more for me a great privilege to be presenting the World Economic Forum's Global Statesmanship Award to a notable personality and dear friend, President Juan Manuel Santos. President Santos has accomplished, accomplished a distinguished career as a journalist, as an economist, as a public servant, and he had numerous positions in the government before being elected President of Colombia in 2010, and then re-elected in 2014. President Santos, of course, has received numerous international awards for what he has achieved and what he has created as his legacy. And, of course, we are all aware that he received most recently the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize. President Santos, we know each another since over 25 years, and it was actually already 25 years ago that we, if I'm not too modest, that we recognized your extraordinary potential as a global leader, because we nominated you at that time global leader of tomorrow. This distinction is also a tribute not only to you, but to the people of Colombia, our joint vision and commitment to improve the state of the world, our values and objectives that certainly are shared by the World Economic Forum and the people anywhere in the world, but particularly in your country, Colombia. Today, Colombia has such a successful story to write. And I just heard the peace agreement which you um, elaborated is a role model for how to create reconciliation after a long period of conflict and to create peace. It is covering all areas and actually, it's a small, a small uh, remarkable because um, uh, your country has suffered for so many years of this conflict. The transformation is clearly the result of your leadership on many fronts. And this is the reason why I'm so honored to um, give you this award, and I should explain, it, it's a little bit symbolic. Of course, um, having our meeting here in Switzerland, we want to promote Swiss products, but uh, this is probably the only clock um, which works without external energy. No battery, no nothing you need. It's just the pressure of air. So it's in some ways the only perpetual machine. And I want to give it to you, Mr. President, as a symbol for making sure that the peace, and I'm convinced of it, that the peace you have negotiated is perpetual. Please join me so I can hand over this.
Global Statesman. Global Statesmanship Award for President Juan Santos in recognition of your leadership and contribution to Peace World Economic Forum, Davos 2017. I leave now the discussion, and I'm very pleased to introduce also my friend, um, President, uh, Minister Berger, Brende, uh, Foreign Minister of Norway, who actually was one of the guarantors of the peace uh, negotiations. And imagine, he just told me he has been 11 times in Cuba. Uh, integrated into the negotiations in the last year. Allow me first to say a few words. Uh, Professor Schwab, thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for this award. As, as you very brightly uh, said, uh, this award uh, is also for the people of Colombia who uh, have been having this uh, uh, resilience uh, in, in this war, then it's thanks to them that we were able to finally, after 52 years of war, uh, come to an agreement with the FARC, finish uh, this conflict, and uh, have a, a much better future. And thank you for your friendship and your support during all these years. As you also rightly mentioned, we know each other for a long, long time. I remember very well the first time I came here back in 1991. And I remember very well on the many occasions I came, one of them, a long conversation I had with Nelson Mandela here in Davos, um, and uh, we had a, a very good conversation that we then had uh, or complemented in South Africa. He gave me uh, very good advice on how to go about uh, seeking and trying to reach peace. But not only uh, on the end of the conflict, uh, you have also supported Colombia uh, in the other aspects which are necessary for what you just mentioned, this award, the, the, the peace be everlasting, which is good economic development, good environmental policies, uh, growth, trade, and all the principles that you defend here from the World Economic Forum, which we have been following for so long, will have also been a very determinant factor in the progress that we made in the peace process, but they will be specifically important in the post-conflict, because now, with the end of the conflict, the opportunities that open up for Colombia are enormous. The conflict was like a handbrake in our development and our growth. Without that conflict, we have a much better future. So thank you, uh, Professor Schwab, for this award. Um, I, I will bring it back to my country with a heart full of gratitude. Thank you very much. Now, Minister Brenda, you, as, uh, as uh, Professor Schwab said, you have been probably one of the key uh, witnesses of the whole process. Um, and Norway has been a tremendous, tremendous support in every respect, not only as a guarantor, uh, but also as advisor and uh, f your support financially and in every aspect. You have been extremely, extremely uh, helpful and important in the process. And you know the process very well. And uh, 
I think what we are supposed to do right now is to have a conversation about the process and the, the different uh, implications. And since you know it very well, uh, you're going to play today the role of journalist. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So here I am. Uh, you, you ask the questions, and I will try to answer them. Thank you, Mr. President, and congratulations uh, with the second very important award um, in the course of two months. And um, we know uh, that uh, 52 years of the longest uh, armed conflict in Latin America is now coming to a close. Six million people has been internally displaced in Colombia. More than 300,000 or close to 300,000 people have been killed, injured. So I hope, uh, Mr. President, that people are already seeing the peace dividend. Could you share with us what you expect in the coming months, how Colombia will look different after these 52 years? And I have to add, even if I'm now playing the role of a journalist, that your leadership through this, even when it was tough, you were under criticism, there were fake news out there, you stood true and know the deal is there, and I hope people are seeing the peace dividend. Uh, what we agreed and what we signed was the end of the conflict. Uh, right now, we are in the transition, uh, what, what is called the DDR, uh, disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration of the uh, guerrilla members of FARC into society. At this very moment, what is happening? They are coming out of the jungles, they are coming out of the mountains, and they are walking and uh, transporting themselves to specific areas where they, in the next uh, six months, will give their, all their arms to the United Nations. In the meantime, we are, having, we are uh, already putting in place a, a development plan for all these regions. These are huge regions of Colombia which have never had the presence of the state precisely because of the war. Nobody went there. Uh, no, uh, there's no infrastructure because no contractor dared to go there. Uh, the state was not present. Uh, so it was a, a vicious circle. The state was not present because there was, there was war. And therefore, because there, the state was not present, there was more war. Now we can convert that into a virtual circle. We have a tremendous opportunity to bring infrastructure, and that's what we're starting to do. Build roads, schools, hospitals. Uh, this is a, an area, or many areas, that are very fertile. The land is it's there to be, to be exploited in, in a sustainable way. Uh, it's a very rich land. And so the, the opportunities open up. Uh, we have to be very well organized and very efficient, effective, as a government, uh, in order for people to start seeing the change fast. This is something that we learned from studying other peace processes. Uh, it's very important that between the moment that you sign a peace agreement and the moment that you start seeing the change, you have to shorten as much as possible the time frame. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, we should have, in the, last, in the next uh, uh, two, three weeks, all of the guerrilla members um, in these uh, uh, centers, in these uh, camps, uh, and then they'll start the disarmament. But let me tell you, this last weekend, uh, it was a, something like a, a surreal, you know, like nobody ever imagined the television uh, um, sceneries of the guerrillas with their arms uh, in, in, the, in a row coming down from the mountains or coming out of the jungles to these camps. This is the end of the war. This is something 
which Colombians never thought was possible just a few years ago. And uh, I can confirm, Mr. President, that this uh, is something very touching. I was with my colleague, Frank Walter Steinmeier, the Foreign Minister of Germany on Sunday, and he came up to me and said, Berger, uh, you won't believe what I experienced in Colombia. I was at, in one of these zones uh, where FARC is now uh, leaving their arms. They're living in tents next to the army people, uh, the civilians, and there is already healing uh, of this uh, process. So uh, it is very consequential in a very short time. Oh, yes, and let me tell you an anecdote. There was a a bit of a scandal in Colombia a couple of weeks ago uh, during Christmas because uh, soldiers and guerrillas and uh, the members of the UN um, mission that, uh, that is verifying the compliance of the agreements were all dancing together. And uh, people thought, oh my God, what are the UN who, so, some people, some critics, uh, this is uh, completely uh, unacceptable that the UN is dancing with, with uh, some women members of guerrillas. They said, my God, this is peace. This is exactly what we wanted. And uh, some policemen and soldiers also dancing. This is exactly what we wanted. Instead of shooting each other, they dance. This is peace. It, it is, um, it is um, very touching, and it shows that we are seeing peace dividend uh, very fast. I, I know that there's also um, initiatives for uh, demining because a lot of areas still have a lot of landmines, so we need to clean these um, areas. And I, I think you also would like international uh, support on this. Oh, it, the, in the, any post conflict, but especially in the Colombian, uh, there are some very particular challenges. We are the second most mined country in the whole world after Afghanistan. Um, we have a bit over 1,100 municipalities and uh, almost half of them are contaminated with mines, some very concentrated. This is a very difficult and cumbersome process. Of course, it's necessary. Uh, we have a very ambitious plan to get rid of all the mines uh, by the year 2021. Um, and uh, we have now a pilot project, which is also a way to reconcile, because it's the guerrilla members and the soldiers and many in many uh, regions, the, also the private uh, organizations that are dedicated to, to this type of work are also there present, um, getting uh, the, the mines or neutralizing the mines one by one. It's very, very difficult to put a mine is very easy and very inexpensive. To take out the mine, to neutralize it, is very expensive and very difficult. But we are doing that, you and Norway and the United States have uh, chaired a a whole group of, of uh, countries that have been uh, donating and helping in this process. And this is one of the big challenges. There are many others, but this is one of the big challenges. But it's a beautiful challenge, because um, when, uh, when you and uh, uh, Secretary Kerry in the last General Assembly of the United Nations uh, convened this group, and you invited me to go and speak to, to the potential donors. I went uh, and I showed a, a book that had like uh, uh, figures for children, which, which it, they were there. And he said, you thought this is a book to learn English or a book to learn how to uh, read and write. No, it's a book to teach the children how to recognize the paths where, where they should walk in order to not be affected by mines. This is something which for any normal person would be, it, it's outrageous, it's something unacceptable. But that's exactly what is going to change with 
what is happening in Colombia. So we'll share more information about the, the mining uh, initiative. Uh, President Santos, you mentioned when you came to Davos in early 90s, you met with uh, Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela and uh, the clerk first time uh, met outside South Africa uh, here in Davos. So there is a legacy of peace and reconciliation under the leadership of uh, Professor Schwab. But reflecting on the very tough years, I, I guess you have been through, you know, they take a specific leadership um, in kind of war, takes also leadership uh, in peace. What, what have been the toughest uh, moments and what can we learn from you in this process and maybe what was the happiest moment? Well, it's, it's, it goes up and down. Uh, I've, I've said many times, because I had the opportunity of making war, I was Minister of Defense, and uh, modesty apart, quite effective. Um, and I had the opportunity of making peace. Leadership in times of war is relatively easy, because it's a very uh, vertical type of leadership. It's black and white. You know, the, the, the bad guys are there, the good guys are here. You rally the forces, and if you are successful, you show trophies, and people will applaud, and you become very popular. That's why I was elected president of Colombia in the year 2010, because I was very popular, because I was very effective making war. Making peace requires a very different type of leadership. Because, first of all, something which is a paradox, peace divides societies. And your leadership is not a very straightforward leadership. You need to lead different sectors. You need to know how to change mentalities, change attitudes, change uh, the way people perceive themselves and perceive their enemies in the, in the speech of uh, the Nobel Prize, I said something that a general taught me. Say, why don't you start calling the guerrillas adversaries, not enemies? Enemies means you have to destroy them, and uh, we are all sons of the same nation. Start by simply tell them that you're, they are your adversaries. This will start changing the attitudes of many people. And it's just a small but very good example of what is needed in making peace. Uh, how to uh, tell a victim that uh, she should forgive and support the process for transitional justice. Uh, it's, it's sometimes very difficult, but I learned a lot from the victims. I thought that the victims were going to be the toughest, the most difficult people to lead in the process of making peace. And I discovered that no, on the contrary, they are the best sources of support. And uh, a professor from Harvard uh, at the beginning told me, you're going to feel many times discouraged, sad with uh, with the desire to throw in the towel, talk to the victims, they will become a source of energy. And I did that during the whole six years, talking to the victims, the, the dramatic experiences that they had. I said, no, no, I must continue, I must persevere. What, what moments would, did I have like of sadness and despair? It was of course, uh, Another lesson that I, that I learned, do not make a referendum when it's not necessary. No. <laughs> and, uh, I was trying to polite, uh, be polite. I didn't want to touch on it, but uh, thank you for raising it. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't necessary. I was stubborn. I did it because I thought it was the correct thing, because I had promised it. Everybody advised me against it. No, don't do it. Uh, you might lose. 
And he said, no, no, but I promised the Colombian people that they, they could vote on that, and I discovered that uh, if, if it's not absolutely necessary, you must not do it. Of course, uh, there were the, mo the happiest moment uh, is when you finally uh, say you got the agreement. Uh, I was in Bogota. Uh, your colleague, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Colombia, she was one of my negotiators in Cuba. And um, she called me and said, President, we finished the last point. And that was such a relief. Uh, so th th that type of contrast, uh, the post uh, uh, plebiscite, post referendum, or the moment that uh, I received the call saying we finished, uh, there are many examples of that type of differences. But the important thing is that the deal is done, and uh, now we have to start, or we have to uh, deliver also in the post-conflict. But Mr. President, uh, a lot of leaders would then, uh, with the Nobel uh, Peace Prize, and also now with uh, uh, seeing clear dividend coming out of this state-of-the-art uh, peace agreement, uh, just um, you know, uh, lean back and and uh, and not take new initiatives. But um, I heard that there is also interesting uh, developments when it comes uh, to the ELN guerrilla. So there is an agreement uh, with the FARC. A guerrilla, and there is a smaller guerrilla uh, still left there. Some people in Colombia said that to me that, oh, they think President Santos will leave that for the next president. Are they right? No, they're wrong. <laughs> um, well, uh, Minister Brenda, you, you uh, ask a very opportune question, because I must um, inform you that before uh, you go to bed today, uh, you will probably receive from Ecuador some extremely important news precisely on that issue. Uh, the, the two uh, parts, the two parties, uh, Colombian government and the LN, uh, are right now in Ecuador uh, negotiating uh, the way to start uh, the official negotiation. We've been at it at least for three, three and a half years. And today, hopefully before you go to bed, you will have some very good news on that aspect specifically. Wow. Mr. President, I, I knew it was not in your character to lay back and be complacent. I, we, we know that you have been a strong leader uh, in war, but also shown uh, unique leadership uh, in time of peace. Uh, it is uh, said uh, by a lot of people that really know uh, uh, about peace agreements that this is the most comprehensive one, um, and people are now using this one to make peace also uh, other places in the world. There are many unique uh, aspects about this peace agreement. Uh, it's the first time that uh, the two parties get together and construct a special uh, jurisdiction uh, from the justice point of view to submit to that jurisdiction in order for the process to guarantee that there will not be any impunity. The most responsible of war crimes, of crimes against humanity, will be investigated, judged, and sanctioned by this special court. Uh, we have been very careful in complying with international rules in, in this aspect, with the Treaty of Rome. Uh, and this is something very, very unique of this, of this process. Most of the peace process simply a full amnesty and, and we get together and, and we forget about uh, the past. In this case, no. The truth, the truth is, and we learned that from other processes, is extremely important that it emerges because many of the victims, the only thing they want to know is the truth. 
there is a saying in the Bible, the truth liberates. You know? um, the truth really makes you free in a peace process, and especially in a conflict of 52 years, that is very important. So that is another aspect. Uh, the, the part of the development of the zones that were affected by the, by the conflict, that's another unique aspect because there's special commitments. The reparations of the victims, we have already repaired uh, close to uh, 650,000 victims, materially repaired. The country that has repaired more victims in the whole world. And we have uh, many more to repair because we have more than 7 million victims. Uh, so there are very unique aspects of this, of this process um, that makes the, 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 the process a very, uh, uh, probably a precedent for other, other uh, uh, conflicts that should, should be resolved by negotiations, and, and we're very proud that this is so, uh, because it was very creative. It was very, uh, and many people helped, many international advisors uh, that went and, uh, let's take this from the South African process, let's take the, this from the Northern Ireland process, let's take the, this from Salvadoran process, and so we ended up with a mixture of experiences and new experiences that makes this quite unique. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, on behalf of all uh, here, we, um, it was so uh, interesting and also touching to hear uh, your story and also how you kept up um, the spirit when it was tough with the meetings of the victims. And the victims also were brought into the peace process. We know that a lot of the victims came to Cuba, met with the negotiators, and that you were inspired all the time by the victims and, and, and to continue uh, your work. Let me just add that aspect. This is the first process where the victims are the center of the solution, of the negotiation, their rights, their rights to justice, to reparations, to uh, non-repetition, to the truth. Those are the pillars of the negotiations, the first time that in a, in a process this has done. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, uh, at least, will not go uh, to bed very early tonight. I will follow what you said in Ecuador, and uh, we'll cross our uh, fingers. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, uh, President th Santos. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wood. Thank you.